Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question 4 which is a 30 mark question on functions and differentiation. So we're given a function and then in A part 1 we're asked to work out the value of g of 5. So we have g of x. To work out g of 5 we just put in 5 wherever we have x in the original function. So if you compare both the function and the question you'll see that 5 is in place of x. So this should give you a hint that you should just put 5 in for x into the function. So that's going to look like this. So we get 5 cubed minus 7 times 5 squared plus 5 minus 12. So be careful here. For the squared on the 5, it's just 5 squared. So don't make the mistake of squaring the 7 as well. You're just squaring the 5 there as that's a common mistake. People square both the 7 and the 5. So be careful there. So we'll start with the 5 cubed. If you're not sure, you can try this in your calculator but you should get 125. And then you get minus seven times by five squared. So let's do the five squared first. So that will give you minus seven times by 25, and you still have the plus five minus 12. So now we just need to do minus seven times by 25, and you'll find that minus seven multiplied by 25 is equal to minus 175. 125 minus 175 plus five minus 12 should equal minus 57. And that's your answer for a part 1, minus 57. So now let's have a look at part 2, which wants us to find the derivative of g of x. So just to remind you, when we're differentiating a function, if you have an x term like this, and just say, for example, it was to the power of 3, to differentiate that, you bring the 3 to the front, and you multiply it by whatever the number in the front is. If there's no number there, that just means that there's 1 there, so 3 by 1 in this case will obviously be 3. You keep the x and then you minus 1 from the power. So here in the power we had 3, we're going to minus 1 from that, so that gives us 3x to the power of 2. So to differentiate x cubed, you get 3x squared. Now I'm going to do an example where there is a number before the x. So for example, 3x to the power of 4. So once again, you're bringing the 4 to the front and multiplying it by the number before the x. So this time you get 3 multiplied by 4, and 3 by 4 is 12. You keep your x, and you minus 1 from the power, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So differentiating 3x to the power of 4, you get 12x cubed. And there's some examples on how to differentiate terms with x. If there's no x term, it just goes to 0. So if you have a number such as 5, differentiating that, that will just go to 0. So now that we've worked through some examples, let's try the actual question. So differentiating g of x, the first thing we have to do is differentiate x to the power of 3. So we bring the 3 to the front and take away 1 from the power. So that gives us 3x squared. Because you've brought the 3 to the front, kept the x, and reduced the power by 1. And now we're going to do the same thing for minus 7x squared. So bring the 2 to the front and multiply it by minus 7, and minus 1 from the power. So 2 and minus 7 is minus 14. The x stays the same. And reducing 2 from the power, we're just left with 1. So x to the power of 1 is the same thing as x. So we can just write x. If you want to write to the power of 1, you can. But we don't usually write to the power of 1. We just write x. And then we're differentiating x. And as I just explained, x by itself is the same thing as x to the power of 1. So let's write it in to make it easier up here. And we're going to bring the 1 to the front and reduce the power by 1. So bringing the 1 to the front, we get 1. And this one is a bit different as you get x to the power of 0. But any number to the power of 0 is always, always, always 1. So no matter what the number is, x could be 10,000, it could be minus 500, no matter what x is. If it's to the power of 0, any number, your answer will be 1. So we're just going to write down 1, essentially it's 1 by 1, as it's 1 by x to the power of 0. So let's just write 1 to keep it simple. And then we have to differentiate minus 12. But as I said before, if you're, dif if you're differentiating a number without any x, it just goes to 0. So we just leave it as 3x squared minus 14x plus 1. You'll find these rules for differentiation in your formula and tables book on page 25. So that's your answer for part 2. Now let's have a look at a part 3. So here we have to find the equation of the tangent to the curve when x is equal to 5. So just to make this a bit simpler, the tangent to the curve is just going to be a line that hits the curve in exactly one place. I'm going to show you an example now of a tangent to a curve. So just to point out, this graph here is not the graph of the equation in the question. It's a different one, as the graph of the equation in the question will be a bit too hard to draw out and also harder to explain and understand. So that's why I've chosen to draw this one, which will make it easier for me to explain what the tangent to the curve will look like. 
So for example, if I pick this point up here, and if I wanna get the tangent to the curve at that point, it would look something like this. So essentially, it's a straight line. So this question is asking us to find the equation of the line that hits the curve, which is what the tangent is, when x is equal to five. So for my example here, it's on the negative side of the x-axis, so we know that x obviously isn't equal to five there, but this was just for the example. We'll go back now to the real thing, but I want to show you that the tangent to the curve is just where a line hits the curve at that point, and it can only hit the curve once. So if it goes through the curve more than once, then it is not a tangent, but this particular tangent here will only hit that curve one time. Therefore, it's a tangent and not just a line through the curve. So as you might know, the formula for the equation of a line is y minus y1 is equal to m by x minus x1. And we can use this as a tangent is just a line, as I said. So there's three things you need for this formula, m, x1, and y1. m is the slope, and be careful, it's not the midpoint. Some people get mixed up and think m is the midpoint, it isn't. You also need x1 and y1, which is a coordinate along the line. It can be anywhere at all along the line, at the start, at the end, or anywhere in between, as long as it's on the line. We can work out m ourselves from the question. So we're told that the first derivative of g of 5 is equal to 6, and the first derivative of a function is actually the slope of the function at that point. So for example, the first derivative of g of 5 is the slope of the function g at 5. So that's what this part means, and you can just differentiate g of x to find the equation. And then whenever you want to find the slope at any particular x value, you can just stick in your x value of where you want to find the slope, and that will give you the value of the slope at that particular x value. So for example here, we differentiated g of x in a part 2, the previous part of the question. They've told us that the first derivative of g of 5 is equal to 6, so that means that if we stick in 5 into the answer for a part 2, we should get 6, which is the slope of g at x equal to 5, and we're told that that's 6 here. So we don't have to do that, we're told that the answer is 6. So the slope of g at x equal to 5 is 6. So that's our m, 6, and x1, y1 is a coordinate on the line. So in this case, we're asked to get the tangent to the curve when x is equal to 5. So that means the x value will be 5, and we need to work out the corresponding y value when x is 5. So we need to put in 5 in for x into the equation. Luckily, we've already done that in a part 1, so that will save us some time. And be careful, you're putting it back into the original equation, not the equation when it's been differentiated already. So it's going back into the original equation, g of x, and we've done that in a part 1, and we got minus 57. So that means the y value when x is equal to 5 is minus 57. So therefore, the coordinate should be 5 minus 57. That's the point where the tangent will hit the curve. So that means y1 is minus 57. So now let's pop this into the formula. And the first thing to point out is that we have a double negative here. We have a minus by a minus, and a double negative will always go to a positive. So minus minus will turn into plus. So that's gonna be y plus 57 is equal to six by x minus five. And now we can multiply out six by x minus five. And six by x is six x. And six by minus five is minus 30, which gives us y plus 57 is equal to 6x minus 30. Now we have two like terms here, that's the plus 57 and the minus 30, as neither of those have the variables x or y. So we can add those together, but they must be on the same side. So I'm gonna move them all over to the right-hand side, and I'm also gonna move the y over. So on the right-hand side, we now have 6x minus 30 minus y minus 57. As remember, when you move a number across the equals to sign, like I did with y and 57. So the right-hand side now looks like this. 6x minus 30, and I'm going to bring the y over to the right-hand side, and it's plus y on the left-hand side, but bringing it over across the equals to sign will change it to minus y, and then we have plus 57, which across the equals to sign, and then we have plus 57, which when moved across the equals to sign will change to minus 57, so we get 6x minus 30 minus y minus 57, and that's all equal to zero. So now we can do minus 30 minus 57, which is minus 87, so that leaves us with 6x minus y minus 87 is equal to zero. And that's our answer for a part three. So essentially that's the equation of the line that hits the curve at one place as where x is equal to five. So now let's have a look at part B of the question. So here we have the graph of the function u of x and we're asked to find a value of x for which the first derivative of u of x is negative. And as I explained previously, the first derivative of a function is always gonna give you the formula for the slope. So we're trying to find out where is the slope going to be negative, 
as we can think of the first derivative as the slope. So where is the slope of this function going to be negative? And it's going to be negative where it is decreasing. So decreasing means going down from left to right. So it's going to be going down like this, or it could be curved down the way like this, but it's definitely going somewhat down from left to right. So we can see it's rising here. It's rising all the way here. It's even rising here, rising steeply here. Slight rise there, but then it begins to fall. See, you can see it starts to fall. So that's where the first derivative will be negative, as that's where the slope is going to be negative. So you can take any value from here onwards, as that's where it begins to go to being a decreasing function, which is negative, which means the first derivative will be negative. So we can take any value from 5 onwards, as that point there is x equal to 5. So I'm just going to pick x equal to 6, but you can pick any point from 5 onwards, as that where the as that is where the function is decreasing, and in other words, where the first derivative will be negative, as the slope will be negative when the function is decreasing. So now let's have a look at b part 2. So it wants us to draw the tangent to the function at the point 4, 2, and use this tangent to work out the estimate for the value of the first derivative of u at 4. So first of all, let's draw the tangent to u of x at the point 4, 2. And the point 4, 2 is right here, so I can draw a tangent like this. So all tangents should look similar. They might not be the exact same, but they should be fairly similar. And the next part of this question wants us to find the value of the first derivative of u at 4. So basically, as I said before, the first derivative is the same thing as the slope. So that question is just asking for the slope of u of x at the point 4. As this is a line, this shouldn't be too hard to get. So remember, the slope of a line is equal to either y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or you can also have the slope of a line equal to rise over run. So the rise of the line over the run of the line. For this question, I'm going to use rise over run as I think that's easier. So you pick two points on the line and I'm going to pick both of these points here. A tip would be to pick points that fall on the corner of the boxes. So you see there how that's on the corner of four boxes there. And that's also on the corner of two boxes. So that's just a tip there to pick those points as it's easier as opposed to picking a point in between two boxes, in between two lines, as that would make it slightly harder. So we have to find out how much it goes up by and how much it goes out by from both of those points. So it's a rise from 1 to 3. So that's a rise of 2. And it runs from 2 to 6, which is a run of 4. So it's a rise of 2 over a run of 4, which is equal to 2 over 4, which is the same thing as a half. So therefore, the value of the first derivative of u at 4 is equal to a half. So the biggest lesson from the video today is that when you differentiate a function, you're getting the formula for the slope of the function at a particular point. To find out the slope at that particular point, just put in the x value of the point and you will get the slope. So that's the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.